Volkswagen is rolling out the ID1, the successor to the e-up, and will explore what it has to offer. Volkswagen is introducing the ID1, essentially the successor to the e-up. We're here at the launch event. The Velvet Revolution is a reminder that even seemingly ordinary people can collectively achieve extraordinary things. Visually, it really stands out. This concept will be the second vehicle based on the new modular electric drive platform, MEB. It will be front-wheel drive and belongs to the urban car family, which is set to be completed by 2026, including the VW ID.2 and ID.2X, and later also the ID.1. The Velvet Revolution is a reminder that even seemingly ordinary people can collectively achieve extraordinary things. The series version is expected to cost around 20,000 euros, while the ID.2 will still be guaranteed to be offered for under 25,000 euros, so... VW is maintaining some price flexibility for the ID.1 compared to the ID.2, and it remains to be seen whether the smaller model will still be worth it once the feature adjustments are factored in. By 2027, Volkswagen plans to introduce nine new models, including the ID.2, ID.2X, and the ID.1. We know how it goes, there's often the SUV, the sedan, or the station wagon version included, but nine new models is really something, especially considering that in recent years there's already been a lot of effort was put in, and for instance, the ID.7 in January this year became the best-selling electric car in Germany, not least probably because of the Tourer. I just tested it for you in a long-distance test. Feel free to check it out in the corner up there. Now, from the largest to the smallest, the ID.1. It's set to be 3.88 meters long, 1.82 meters wide, and 1.49 meters tall. And here's why that matters. It has quite compact dimensions, but it's a rather wide car for its length, which is, of course, great in the city because it means there's more interior space, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Good space, but still a relatively short vehicle. Just for comparison, the ID.2 is 4.05 meters long, so just about 20 centimeters longer. That actually makes quite a difference in size. Volkswagen has also revealed the trunk volume, which is said to be 305 liters. VW itself states that the E-Up used to have 250 litres, and just for reference, the Hyundai Ioniq, for example, starts at 280 litres, but offers up to 350 litres of space thanks to an adjustable rail system for the rear seats, while the Dacia Spring, which should also be a direct competitor in terms of price, comes in at 288 litres. So Volkswagen is already well positioned in the upper range of this segment. There are also a few technical specifications, and that's where I have some concerns, because VW states that they plan to limit the car to 130 kilometers per hour. Now, of course, you have to say, yes, you won't be covering long distances on the highway with this car, but it would still be desirable that you can drive short stretches a bit faster just to maintain a steady 120 or 130, for example, and then be able to overtake briefly. That won't work with the car. Unfortunately, the front engine delivers 70 kilowatts or in the old currency, 95 horsepower and in total at least 250 Kilometers according to WLTP. That sounds low, and it is, particularly when compared to the Hyundai Ioniq, which manages 320 kilometers with its small battery. It is priced at just over 20,000 euros, but VW also didn't say there would be a one in front of the number. So it will be exciting to see where the final numbers end up. And now, after the technical data, let's move on to some design topics. I personally really like the design, particularly the front with those striking eyes and the sleek black band across it but also next to it, the raised LED lights. That really stretches the car in width, and it actually looks quite cute, almost like a more advanced version of the E-Up. The E-Up was the first electric car I was able to test and showcase on my channel back then. That's why the connection feels a bit stronger there, and it even had a similar color tone back in those days. That already creates many parallels. Slightly different, though, is the positioning of the charging flap. Here, VW has decided to place it from the upper right of the sill to positioned at door height, perhaps quite practical for city centers where you can directly load from the curbside. But I know that many who charge their car in the garage aren't too thrilled about it, as it's simply not as convenient to access and operate. Whether there will be a frunk, for example, is still unclear at the moment, but we just discussed the trunk volume. Charging speeds and battery sizes are still unknown at this point. The ID.2, however, is expected to feature at least 42 kilowatt hours, particularly if both are built on the same platform. I could imagine that the smaller model might also get these 42 kilowatt hours. Maybe there's another battery below. With the ID.2, there's also a 56 kilowatt hour option, and VW has already advertised a charging speed from 10 to 80% in 20 minutes. 
it would only be consistent if the same applies here to the ID.1. And for me, it would be important that this car comes standard with 11 kilowatts and also with DC charging, because those are two things, which when the car hits the market in 2026, 2027, will be absolutely essential. Visually, you can clearly see that it has flush door handles, which Volkswagen hasn't done yet. There's always been the handle recess. I'm really curious to see how that will actually look in the production model. And I think it's pretty cool that the roof keeps its color all the way to the top, but the A pillar is painted black, which gives the whole concept a slightly lighter, more airy vibe. At least that's my initial impression. As you can see, there's not really much to see yet. At the rear, there's also this black bar and... Again, there are these outer lights and the logo is illuminated just like before. And I actually looked into it and technically it's only supposed to be lit when a connection to the light is established. I'm really curious how they'll handle that in the series because either the logo simply won't light up or the lighting concept will have to undergo a fundamental change here. We'll have to wait and see how it ultimately ends up looking in the final version or if there's any change on the legal side regarding that matter. And the vertically standing lamps are also there. However, I think they'll likely just end up being reflectors in the series because adding lights down there again is also technically quite expensive in terms of production. The rear end is also reminiscent of a modern E-Up again, and I really like it too. Unlike the ID.2, this one stands out a bit more and those three-dimensional lights just like at the front are really cool. And when you see how the animation works when signaling, for example, how it pulses outward, you can really tell that VW is definitely trying to get back into this personal, friendly, and slightly humanized. It's heavily focused on design language, but unfortunately, there's not much more to discuss about the car at this point. Now, moving on to the interior, if you thought the outside was minimal, it's even less on the inside, as I can't show it to you right now. There are a few pictures, the cars that were at the event now, but they still had no interior, and you can also see quite well in the pictures that it's still very much in a study-like state. That hardly anything will ultimately turn out to be realistic in the end. That's why you're now getting these close-up photos here. The interior, however, is distinctly characterized by the prominent presence of a large display. That looks like a 15-inch screen. Most likely, there'll also be a smaller version available. I hope Volkswagen steers clear of offering an entry-level version without a display, similar to what Citroën or Opel are currently doing, for instance. The display reveals a lot when you look closely. First, it appears as if it had a new user interface, which isn't really necessary because, in my opinion, Volkswagen is already doing so many things right in its latest generation of cars and vehicles. Moreover, it reveals that there are ventilated and heated seats. How likely that is in the smallest vehicle is another question entirely. Below the display, there are shortcuts, for example, for the seat heating and probably also climate control. The dual zone climate control and in the middle, it looks like a roller that you can then probably adjust the volume with. The whole thing can also be controlled, for example, through the steering wheel. That's where haptic buttons find their place again. Everything in a rather more angular design. But I think it looks pretty cool visually. I would wish that they still incorporate a swipe function because that was always really neat in the current models. But I also understand that many people don't like the glossy piano finish everywhere. And that's really noticeable. The piano lacquer is only present in one specific spot within this concept, and that is below the display, and underneath it also looks like there's an extra compartment. Well, it's all not exactly realistic and shouldn't be taken too seriously. Let's see how well it all turns out in the series, but to get a decent first impression, this here already does a fairly solid and convincing job. The driver information display behind the steering wheel is integrated into the e-screen, looks similar to the one in the ID.7, will also provide basic info, but maybe a bit more than in the ID.7, because I doubt they'll fit an AR head-up display here space-wise. And on the steering wheel, you can see pretty clearly it'll have the same steering column stocks as we know from the current models. So gear shift on the right and left for the windshield wipers, turn signals, and so on. Centered at the bottom is a large Bluetooth speaker, something we're seeing in many concept cars recently, for example, in the Kia EV2, where there's a clear trend to include a removable speaker somewhere. I think it's a pretty neat feature, though it's probably unlikely to make it into the production model. But one thing I can definitely imagine happening is an announced rail system in the e-board, which would allow for the seamless integration of accessories like a table or a tablet holder designed specifically for the passenger. Exactly how that will be implemented, I don't know, but it sounds pretty cool at first glance. The front air vents resemble the exterior lights. The seats look sleek, modern, and very stylish with a standout design. 
they kind of remind me a bit of the Neo seats, but they look very modern and these color accents are really well done. And underneath you can see an ultra futuristic center console. It's supposed to slide forward and backward, similar to the ID.buzz, so that the passengers in the back can benefit from it as well. In addition, there are also two storage compartments built into this center console, and you can extend them toward the front or the back, ensuring that everyone in the car has a convenient spot to place their belongings. And that actually sounds pretty good. Cool. What's also practical is the overall seat design, because the passenger seat and the rear seats can be completely folded down, so you can create a completely flat surface. Unlike, for example, Hyundai, they've opted, at least in this concept, not to design the driver's seat to fold down. As a result, you don't get that bed-like feel. However, I believe it's the more practical approach, enabling the interior to be far more flexible for transporting larger or bulkier items. I don't think most people would want to sleep in such a compact car. If you feel differently, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. After all that info, I'm going to head up here to the stands for a bit and simply let the folks down there take over the conversation instead. The car looks promising. The question is whether they'll actually bring it in for around 20,000 euros or whether around 20,000 euros will end up meaning 23,000 and there'll be a tiny gap to the ID.2 all. I think it's really cool though. I mean, imagining that in the future, all care services and pizza delivery people will be driving around in it and you could have it as a second car, maybe even as your first car. Then it's definitely a statement. I'm super curious now to hear what you all think about it. It was hectic again. There was a lot going on here, but I hope I was able to get the content across to you as well as possible. There are definitely a few more details in our podcast, which drops tomorrow morning at six. Tarek and I will talk about the vehicle after the event, exchange some thoughts on what we think of it. If you don't want to miss it, check below the video. The kilometers are done. For me, that's it now. Up here, the first look at the ID.2 all, down here, the mileage eaters.